I'll record on this computer. So there we have, a, uh, I'm gonna start talking about stem and leaf plot. And if you have any questions, just stop me, okay? Um, so I can see the numbers from over here and I'm gonna go ahead and, and do something. And this is just demonstrating to you guys, hey mama, um, how to do a stem and leaf plot. So I'm gonna put zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three. And it might not be so apparent right now, but I, hopefully as I do it, you'll see it. So our biggest number is 39, our smallest number is zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the numbers and I'll start filling out the stem and leaf plot. So here we go. Uh, we have seven, we have 39, we have 13, we have nine, we have 25, okay, we have eight, uh, we have 22, we have zero, we have two, we have 18, we have two, we have 30, we have seven, right here, we have 35, right here, uh, we have 12, we have 15, we have eight, we have six, we have five, okay, we have 29, we have zero, we have 11, we have 39, we have 16, and we have 15. And so let me just do a quick count. I think there's um, 25 numbers. And um, let me do a quick count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I have all 25 numbers. Now, this is called stem and leaf plot. And let me just kind of go through it again. All right, so here's 39, 35. Now what I did is I, I if the if the uh, if the leaf was between zero and four, we have zero, one, two, three, four. I had it here, and then we had five, six, seven, eight, nine here, and that's how I separated them. You see that? So the top one would deal with leaves that were from zero to four. The bottom one dealt with leaves that were from five to nine. Any questions on this? If you have a question, just go ahead and voice it right now because I'm gonna put them in order now, very quickly. Questions or concern? Does, can the plot be used for uh, uh, numbers that have uh, three di digits, like yes. 100? Yes, oh. yes, it can be. And, and we'll discuss that a little bit later on. Um, it's not so hard, you can do it. Like for instance, you, like for 135, your stem will be a 13, your leaf will be a five. But what happens is as you get the numbers more and more spread out, you start running out of space to do it on your paper. So there are certain situations where doing the stem and leaf plot is not advantageous. In this case, it's pretty advantageous, okay? Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, so let me proceed. So um, let me go ahead and put them in order. So, here, this is 599. This one's 556. Five, this is 123. I'm, I'll do that one last. The next one is 0022. Zero, zero, two, two. And then this one is the hardest one. I guess it's I'll write it here, five, six, uh, seven, seven, eight, eight, eight. Are there, are there three eights? Let me look at the problem. Uh, no, two, mister. There's two eights, so I'm, I miswrote one of them. That means that I might have missed 
One of them is an 18. Uh-huh. One of them is an 18. So it goes here. Thank you. There's where I messed up. So six and a five. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think the numbers are in order now, right? Let me just make sure we have 50 because I replaced one of the eights. All right, so you have to be careful when you do this. Obviously, I caught my mistake, and the reason I caught my mistake is because I've done this problem now six times. Okay, so I erased this. Now, now they're in order, by the way, and literally I've already uh, timed this with my other kids, and they took like three minutes and 15 seconds to put in order. It takes me two minutes using this method. And now if you turn your head to the side like this, Look what you got. You got a histogram, a bar graph, a type of bar graph. You see it? You get the shape of the distribution. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So um, let's go ahead and then discuss now what we're supposed to do. So we're we're working on something called a frequency distribution and i'm going to go ahead and quickly write these numbers on the board uh zero zero two two uh s did i just rewrite i didn't rewrite these in order let me go ahead and do it five six seven eight eight two sevens eight eight and uh nine so write these in order five six seven seven eight eight nine so now we go five six seven seven eight eight nine uh we have now 11 12 13 separate this to a little bit more we have uh 15 15 16 18 22 25 29, 30, 35, 39, 39. So there's the numbers put in order. And we're going to make something called frequency distribution. So frequency distribution consists of a class of a frequency. F stands for frequency. And a class can be considered an interval. And we'll see what that is now. So let me just go ahead and go through the steps. Number one, find your range. Range equals max minus min. Can somebody tell me what the max minus min is here? What's my max? 39. What's my min? Zero. So this equals to 39 minus zero is? 39. 39. Okay. Number two, you need to find your class width. Find class width. Well, what's my class width? It's going to be class width equals range divided by the number of classes. But I haven't told you what how many classes I want, how many classes I want. I will tell you this problem wants five. We want five classes. Okay. So what happens when I take 39 and I divide that by five? What do I get? What do I get? 7.8. 7. 7. 7. Now, let me just be extremely clear with you guys. For only this part of the book, for this book, okay, we're going to get this number that we got here and we're going to go ahead and round it to eight. We always, for class width, 
for determining the class width for a frequency distribution we're going to round up to the nearest whole number. Later on in chapter seven, you're not rounding up. You're a mister, well, do I round up? And I'll be like, nope, you're not going to round up. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? There's no point. So we got seven point. We're rounding up to eight. Now, before I continue and, and get on to this stuff here, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page with that rounding up. So let's say you got 8.1. You're rounding up to what? Eight. Nine. Nine. Round up. Round up. Trust me. I know it sounds counterintuitive, and it probably is because we know how to round. But for this section, in this part of the book, for determining class width, we're going to round up. So if it's 8.5, where do we round to? Nine. Nine. How about 8.4? Nine. How about nine? Nine. Ten. Oh my God. I know, I know, I know. But just for this section of the book, and again, there's many ways of doing what we're gonna do today. And when I'm done with this section, and we're done with the next few sections, and after you have tested you, then I'll talk to you about other ways we can do the same thing we're doing. But only after we've we've done it this way in the book, book's way, okay? So what's the smallest number? What's the smallest zero. number? Zero. zero. Now watch. What's zero plus eight? Eight. Eight. What's eight plus eight? Sixteen. What's sixteen plus eight? Oh, 20, uh, 24. 24. 24 plus eight? 32. 32. So this here, if you take 8 minus 0, you get 8. That's your class width. 16 minus 8, 8. 24 minus 16, 8. 32 minus 24, 8. That's how we do our class width. We do it vertically. Now, I'm going to break this line here. This does not mean minus. This means through, I guess. What's 1 less than 8? 7. 7. 7 plus 8. 15 plus 8. 24 plus 8. 31. 31 plus 8. 39. Yep. And now notice, look, notice this. One less, one less, one less, one less, add 8. These here are called lower class limits. And these guys here are called upper class limits. Got it? Mm -hmm. Now, questions or concerns? No. Please. Obviously, if you're not paying attention, then you're not paying attention, but I won't know because I told you to turn off your cameras. And plus, you're really far away. Questions or concerns? Okay, so no. we're good. Zero through seven. So this says every number that's zero through seven, including, you know, the ends between zero and seven, including the ends, we count. Does this meet the criteria? Yes. Yes. And that one? Yes. And that one? Yes. And that one? Yes. And that one? Yes. 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 Does this one meet the criteria? No. No. no, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We write an eight here. No, tráeme. No, no me traiga nada. Tentación, tentación. No, no me traiga nada. Yeah. No me llame, que no me voy a hacer Okay. Sorry about that, guys. So now let's go eight through fifteen. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. We got eight more. Then we have one, two, three. Next one, 24 to 31. One, two, three. And the last one, one, two, three. So now we go eight plus eight is 16, plus three is 19, plus three more is 22, plus three is 25. So we say that the sum 
of our frequencies is 25. This symbol here is called sigma. It's capital sigma. It's, in, it's a Greek alphabet. Sum of the frequencies equals 25. Sum of, sum of F equals 25. So at least we know we counted everything. Mm -hmm. That's how you do a frequency distribution. So even though the recording is not the best, it's the recording. So how do I stop this recording? That's here. Pause recording.